welcome 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 back to my step-by-step -step video series so you're in part two of the series and this is where I summarize what I learned from my father now remember I want you to go through the exercise as well all the things that you remember about your father and you're also going to summarize what you learned how it has affected your behavior into adulthood. So one of the first things was my love of dancing. He helped to bring that to life by allowing me to play the jukebox in his bar. I still remember dancing. I love it. I still love to dance, guys. Yes. I love to go to parties. I love clubbing. I'll be on the, the dance floor the whole night and don't drink anything, just water. So I'm actually a cheap date. <laughs> yes, I love that. He also told me to add a subtract in my head. To this day, I still do. So I don't need a pen and pencil to add and subtract. I can add and subtract in my head and I can multiply and divide in my head. And that's a skill that you want to teach your children early. How to add and subtract in their head. It's a very, very useful life skill. So you could also probably play, play a bar with them or play a shop with them. But teach them how to do that. He also developed my entrepreneurial side. Yes, he did that. Because I used to go to the market with him. And I would have my own set of belts and whatever to sell. And I would sell them off and come back. So I kind of got into the habit of... Of selling so I knew how to pedal goods so to speak and that that actually helped me when him finally kicked me out yeah the peddling of the goods is what helped me with my hustling how I was able to survive you know on the streets he also to some extent gave me a sense of independence Yes. I mean, my mother started it, yes. But he solidified it when he he showed me the currency tin and said, this is the money in here, so use it whenever you want. You know, so he gave me, literally gave me a bank, guys. You know, I mean, when him keep me up, I never have the bank still. But while I was there, I had a bank, so I knew how to take what I needed from my lunch money, bus fare, and buy books and whatever it was that I needed myself and my brother so I learned how to handle money real fast I was like 12 13 14 when I was there so that helped me a lot you know what else helped me when I was living up at that Mills bar my love of houses I saw it started when I lived in Jonestown them the house there are nothing compared to them house there Mills bar Avenue them house there Mills bar just imagine a child walking up 12 13 14 up Mills Bar every day. And if you don't know Mills Bar Avenue, I want you to Google it. Take a drive up there, people. The place still look the same, although a lot of the houses are now apartment complexes, right? Because these lands are like an acre and an acre and a half. And my love of houses, that's where it started. There's some beautiful houses up there. there are castles, you know? In my eyes, there are castles, there are mansions. And to this day, I still live, love big house. I don't care what nobody wants to say. I love big house. So, I have big house, I have to build big house. I don't build little house. So, this, this little house movement and living a small house, container house is not for me. No, no, no. I like big houses. Yes. Because it shows what you've worked for. It shows all the years of earnings. That, I, that money that passed through my hand. The big old show it. And I can walk past it, touch it, and look at it and say, yes, it's me build that. And I want my grandchildren to be able to say that as well. And I hope that you, when I say this, that you will, it will inspire you, you know, to want for your children and your grandchildren to say, yeah, man, my granny do this. And my grandfather do this. You understand? And understand what you've worked for. So I want you to be proud of that. Alright? 
My love of houses at Mills Bar. You know what else he did for me too? He pushed me to buy a house real early. Because I tell you guys, nobody was going to kick me out of no more house. And when I tell you subsequent stories, you'll understand that I was pushed around a lot from one place to the next to the next to the next. So he started that whole journey for me, that first step to say, you know something, Claudia. Why are you not supposed to tell you to leave the house, friend? No, no, no. And as a matter of fact, not only is anybody not to tell you to leave one house, but better you have more than one, you know, so you can bounce yourself around in any bedroom that you want. If you don't feel like living there, so pack up your suitcase and go to the next house. And the one you bug you out, pack up again and just move to the next house. You understand? So, he, he did that. Yeah, man. He did, he did that. He started me. That step to say, in my head, to say, yes, me have to own a house. Right? No. There are other things. Through him, I saw the dangers of alcohol and the dangers of gambling. Yes. Because of that experience with him coming home drunk, drinking white rum and milk, and gambling away his fortune. Because when he kept me out of Mills Bar, I didn't have money. That whole thing made me realize that, first of all, I don't associate myself with drunkards or people who drink heavily. Not even a lot of ticket me by. No. No, no, no. So alcohol, I learned through him, alcohol is a dangerous thing. And if you're watching this video... And you're a young person and you have been somehow been drawn to alcohol, whether through your friends or whomever. I want you to stop and consider because alcohol and gambling are two things that will rob you of your ability to buy a house. Yes, because all those Extra monies that you could have been saving, you have now taken it and given it away to the gambling shop and to the bars. So you have to consider, if you want to buy a house, gambling and drinking have to stop. Alright everybody, that have to stop. Now, he also made me realize that... There are people out there that will hurt you. So, you need to understand that and safeguard yourself against that. And not only that there are persons out there that will hurt you, but the closest people to you will hurt you. Not someone from a distance, but somebody like your father. Will hurt you. Whether directly. Or indirectly. Yes. Because that day when he. Said leave. That was a day that. The pain was just. Too much. Even now I have to shake. I have to shake it off. You know I have to say Claudia. You're tougher than this. So, you have to understand, people, that there are people out there that will hurt you, and you must safeguard yourself, your emotions, even your money, your children. Because there's some pain that you can't get rid of. It's there with you forever. You're going to live with it. But you know, even through all of that, I think the best lesson I learned from my father was handling up money. 
the handling of money. Very, very important. And the handling of real money too. Cash money that you, you could hold in your hand. Not the handling of computer money. Because my, my father couldn't read and write. So he never had a bank account. You never go on a bank or draw on the money and all these things. It was another... It was another relative who taught me that time. You'll hear the story. But he taught me to handle real money. Take up the cash. Spend it. Take up the cash. Buy something. Sell. Collect him back the cash. You know, put it in the currency in tin. He taught me that. So, and for that, I'm grateful. Because it really solidifies. It, it, it helped me with my... my financial life which if you don't get that right early then you're going to be in problems so my father got his financial dreams early he got his breaks luck was on his side yes opportunity meet preparation or preparation meet opportunity he met my mother he met the right people in business he had my aunt too but somewhere along the line some other vices got to him, right? So I want you to do the same exercise. Think about your father and what lessons you have learned, whether directly or indirectly, that influence how you behave today, whether it's with money, whether it's with your spouse, whether it's with your children or other people, your career. How did your knowing your father influence what you do today? All right, so ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for staying with me and look out for part three of the video series. In part three, I talk about my teachers and my friends along the way who helped me and made me into what I am. Thank you so much. So have a beautiful, beautiful evening. Thank you.